All right, so now we've taken our images, we've taken our calibration frames, and we've put our images on our computer in a folder. And now we want to stack them. And so what we're going to do, or what I'm going to do here, um, go to Deep Sky Stacker, open it up, and here we go. Um, pretty simple to use. And if you look over here at the top left, you have open picture files. This will be your light frames. Underneath it, it has all four types of calibration, dark, flat, dark, flat, and offset bias. Click open in picture files. I'm already in the right folder because I've already stacked this and I did it again today just to kind of test everything out. And, but normally you'd have to find it. So say it opened up to here, I would just click the folder that I made. Usually what I do is put it a folder on my desktop. Um, click light and there we go. So again, because I've gotten obviously stacks down there already, um, I have to select them individually. Star files, again, same. Select them all. Flat files, again, flat folder. Our dark flat files. And then our offset and bias. In my case, all 100. Um, and then, then we're going to click check all. Um, one note, if you have more than one evening of the same target and you want to stack them all together, go down here to where it says main group and group one. Click group one. Go up. Let's pretend this is a different evening. Select our files. And then, again, the same all the way through. Um, Go up to take some old boom. Um, we have our main group, group one, and then when once you put something in to the next group, it'll open up another group tab for you. If you we don't need these, not even write anything, so whatever. Um, from here, once you check all. If you want to register check pictures, this screen pops up. Recommended settings. I find for the most part that the recommended settings are pretty good. Um, and it will base these settings off the length of your exposures. Um, and so, you know, it'll tell you your processing long exposure, possibly good signal to noise ratio images, et cetera, et cetera. I do not use super pixel mode. I'm not even going to go over super pixel mode. Um, the only real option here is you have, you can use the Sigma clipping combination or auto adaptive weighted average combination. I always use Sigma clipping and I mainly always use Sigma clipping because I've never had an issue with it. And that's what I was always told to help get rid of like satellites and airplanes. Um, Everything else is down. Everything else is pretty green. Um, and then your last option is if the color balance in your image is hard to fix in post-processing, you can use the RGB com background com calibration. I never use it. Okay. Stacking parameters. Again, mostly I use the default, so it's standard mode. There is mosaic mode, intersection mode, which I'm not quite sure. Oh, that just does common of all. Um, I don't use this for mosaics. I use Astro Pixel Processor. So, again, standard. You can enable drizzle. I'm not going to go over drizzle here, but you can enable drizzle, especially if your data is really good. Um, light, again, we're using Kappa Sigma. Dark, I'm going to go it's Kappa Sigma, but it's median. Um, and I think it gives you a description. Cover over it. You can read that if you want. Um, flats, bias, they're all the same. Again, alignment's automatic. Saving in TIFF, because we're going to process this in Photoshop. 
if you were to process this in Pixin Sight and you didn't want to stack in Pixin Sight, but you wanted to stack in Deep Sky Stacker, or if you wanted to process an Astro Pixel processor, but stack in Deep Sky Stacker, you can save it as a FITS file, or you can save it as a TIFF, doesn't matter. Um, FITS will keep the headers of the image, so it'll tell the software what time it was taken, etc. Um, but TIFF is fine for what we're doing here. I don't use any of the cosmetic stuff. And I'll put, um, I do check this, append the number to avoid overwrite. So say you stack it once, and you're like, okay, that didn't quite end up how I wanted it. So I want to stack it again to see if I can stack it better with a different setting. Instead of overwriting the file, it'll just do a second stack and mark it 001. Um, and then create output file in the folder of the reference frame. Um, I usually keep that clicked, so it'll put it in your light folder. Um, you can create an output file in a folder of the file list, or you can create an output file in a file folder of your choosing. If you're doing more than one session, like more than one night, so you have two to three nights you're stacking together, your reference frame may be from your first night or it might be from the second night, or you might get lucky and it might be from your final night. Um, if it's from your, if you don't care where it goes, then don't worry about it. If you want it in that last session's folder, then to come down here, and just put it in there. Um, regardless, it will tell you once it's done stacking up here where it saved the file. And once you're done with that, you click okay. Um, it'll tell you your stacking step. It'll say your stacking step one is six hours. Um, it'll tell you that you have 100 bias frames. You have 30 dark frames. You have 25 flat frames. You have 25 dark flat frames. And if you have more than one session, it'll also tell you that as well. Um, and then from there, you just click OK. Boom. Off, you're off to the races. It goes through your bias frames first. And I think it goes through your dark frames. Then it goes through dark flats and then it goes through flats. And then once it does all your master dark, flat, and bias, um, it'll then register your light frames and then it'll stack your light frames along with adding the calibration into it. And then it'll give you a final image. This takes, depending upon how many um, light frames you're stacking, um, it could take a few minutes or it could take 30 minutes. Um, if you're stacking a whole bunch, it could take an hour. Um, it also does depend upon the speed of your computer and how many processors you let it use. Um, I let it use all the processors because usually what happens, I come in, you know, five o'clock in the morning and I should be going to bed after I tear down all my equipment, um, put everything on the computer and I want to see how it looks. And I just, I'm not running anything in the background. If you are running a lot of software in the background, um, other than your stacking software, you may want to not use all your processors. Um, I will say this, I have ran this and Photoshop at the same time and processed with Photoshop while stacking an image in the background. It does take a little bit longer to stack and Photoshop, depending upon what you're doing, might take a little bit longer to run. Um, but I've never had any negative effects. Um, we're not going to watch this through the whole way because there's no need. Um, but you can see it's going through the process of doing the, the bias, the darks, the dark flats, and the flats. And it's pretty quick. And then it's going to register the 36 images. Once it registers the 36 images, I think it then applies the calibration frames. And then it stacks the light images. Um, but because I've already done this and I can't think of anything else to say um, while this is stacking. We're just going to stop it and move on to processing.